Sometimes people deal with burning questions. Questions that disturb their sleep or keep replying in their minds. My problem was, is there really no effective way to ascultate patients outdoors in noise environments like road traffic collisions, music festivals or mass casualty incidents? Or have we simply become lazy and decided to refrain from auscultation instead of actively seeking a good fix? I felt that the solution was easier and more affordable than we may have thought. Just needed to confirm if my somewhat unusual idea was correct. My name is Alex Hepner and this is Group Call. Auscultation is a fundamental and powerful clinical tool. However, meaningful auscultation is almost impossible in high noise environments. Three independent publications, including a comparative study, confirmed that effective auscultation in ambient noise over 60 decibels is practically impossible. Why electronic stethoscopes have somewhat improved the situation, police scientists noted that variations in sound characteristics could lead to significant differences in diagnostic quality. Chinese researchers alarmed about a mechanism of fake crackle noise in certain models of the stethoscope, therefore the use of sophisticated equipment may not be a definitive answer yet. And that's when we decided to join the discussion. When Alex came to the office with his idea, I thought he was a bit crazy at the start, to be honest. But then, the more I thought about it, I was like, this might actually make sense. My thinking was simple. If we cannot auscultate at the scene due to the ambient noise, instead of refraining from auscultation and risking that we will miss some important signs and symptoms, let's try to be professional, let's try to control the environment. To control the environment, I decided to use the Riglu rescue shelter, which is widely employed by search and rescue teams, ambulance services, fire brigades and first responders. I wanted to find out if, aside from providing isolation from rain, wind and low temperatures, an affordable, inflatable shelter like this could also effectively shield the clinician from noise, enabling proper auscultation in situations where it would normally be challenging. In addition to the Riglu, I brought along a standard stethoscope commonly used by paramedics in the UK, a professional device that simulates heartbeat and breathing sounds, and a sound level meter. Although common sense may suggest that the noises area in the UK is somewhere around the industrial zone of Manchester, following an analysis by the Department for Food, Environment and Rural Affairs, we discovered that the vibrant city of Slough was the UK's noisiest location. 60% of its residents live in areas that regularly reach 55 decibels, prompting it to be the first place we visited. The outdoor noise measurement was 85 decibels. Auscultation was satisfactory. But that was the check in the city noise. We wanted to know if the Regulu could provide sound suppression at the scene of a road traffic collision. Therefore, we decided to visit the busiest British motorway, the M25, also known as the London Orbital. The motorway, originally designed for 100,000 vehicles per day, it now handles an average of 200,000 vehicles a day. The noise level outside the shelter reached 86 decibels, but inside was significantly lower. And auscultation was successful. Therefore, we believe that a rescue shelter can easily serve as an aid for auscultation at the scene of an RTC. But what about a mass casualty incident? To simulate the intensification and diversity of noises that may occur in such an event, we travelled to London. London, the third busiest city in the world, just after Mexico City and New Delhi, with a population of 8.9 million, nearly 30 million annual visitors and over 2.6 million registered cars, London is a bustling metropolis. The busiest place in London is Piccadilly Circus, with over 100 million people visiting annually, and that's where we decided to set up our shelter. The noise levels were higher than 78 decibels, but inside the Riglu, we measured a pleasant 59 decibels. Auscultation was successful straight away. 
with this experiment we wanted to prove that as clinicians we should never take things for granted. Instead, we should always be inquisitive and look for solutions outside of the box. If you'd like to see more outside of the box ideas, please check out this video. My name is Alex Hepner and this was Group Call.